Good evening. Welcome to our celebration of the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please join us for our opening hymn number 472, Holy Darkness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy.
Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisha, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisha and said, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elisha replied, As the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, If you will not accept, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other God except to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David, such is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. 
If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus journeyed his, continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. I think the message in today's gospel is pretty obvious for us, that we need to be more grateful to God than we tend to be. We have to have more gratitude in our hearts. Leprosy was and still is a horrible and incurable disease. It can be controlled preventively through proper hygiene, but it can't be cured. And so we hear in the gospel about the leper, and we know that leprosy is a bacterial infection. It causes the loss of senses and then eventually paralysis, and then even parts of the body disintegrate, extremities start to fall off. It's a really terrible illness. And so we know that the ten lepers who met Jesus were living in misery. They were living in hopelessness. They were suffering unspeakably while they waited to die because that was the ultimate cure for leprosy, was their death. And when they see Jesus, they beg and the, Jesus, the wonder worker, rabbi that they hear about, and they ask him to help. His heart's moved, we hear, with pity. He intervenes, and he gives them a brand new lease on life. He cures them. The drama of this encounter, I think, leaves us shocked that only one decided to come back and make, take the trouble to come back and say, thank you for curing me. Thank you for healing me. I think it exposes the ugliness of ingratitude, and it should bring us to our knees in sorrow for the times when we've been ungrateful to God to acknowledge those gratitudes we need to do every day, to be thankful. We tend to take his many gifts, creation, life, health, opportunities, the sacraments, we tend to take all these for granted, like the nine lepers who were so self-absorbed that they didn't even th say thank you to their Savior for curing them. I think that's the obvious message. But there's also another message equally important that we can easily overlook. Jesus Christ cures these ten lepers with a mere word. 
he tells them, go show yourselves to the priests. They were in charge of verifying the cures. So they set out and they do so, and on the way they suddenly realize that they were completely healed. What is the lesson? That Jesus Christ truly is the Lord. He is the master of life and death and all the forces of nature. This is our King. Today's first reading offers a perfect illustration of how to receive the gifts of God with gratitude. Naaman is an officer in the Syrian army. He's an effective commander, and he has won many victories. But there's one battle he cannot win, and that is leprosy. His wife, however, has a Jewish serving girl who tells him that there's a prophet in Israel who can cure him. And buoyed by this hope, Naaman goes to see the prophet. When he arrives, the prophet tells him to do something he thinks is rather strange. He says, go and wash in the river Jordan seven times, and you will be healed. It sounds ridiculous to Naaman. And he only acquiesces after his servants remind him that he has nothing to lose. So he jumps into the Jordan River seven times, and he's healed. And like the Samaritan in today's gospel, he recognizes the wonderful thing that God has done for him. And he gives thanks to God for that gift. He also thanks the prophet and gives him gifts. Naaman didn't take the gift for granted. He received it with gratitude, and it changed his life. God wants us to develop the virtue of gratitude because he wants us to experience the joy that comes from knowing that we are loved by him without limits, without conditions. But like every virtue, gratitude can only grow if we exercise it. How can we exercise gratitude? I think there's nothing easier. All we have to do is say thank you and mean it. And it's never too late to say thank you for something that we've been given. I'm sure we've all received a note of thanks at some point in our lives, long after we've performed the favor or had given the gift. When we get that thank you note, it arrives and it warms our hearts because it shows that our action lasted. It shows that someone was thinking about us long after the favor or the gift was given. This week, we're challenged to warm someone else's heart by saying thank you, not being ungrateful. We owe a debt of gratitude to so many people. I'm sitting there thinking before Mass about the various ways that I need to be thankful for whatever goes on around me. But just think about the people we need to be thankful for and the gifts we've been given. First of all, our parents, our teachers and coaches, and all those who dedicated themselves to us in our years of education. Maybe it's our first boss who was patient with us and, and tried to give us a second chance as many times as he could. Maybe it's a relative or a neighbor who inspired us with their good example. Perhaps it's the soldiers who fought to protect our freedom, the police, the firefighters, the statesmen who dedicate themselves to keeping our community safe and prosperous. Perhaps the author of a book that we've read that gives us some joy and inspiration. And you can add to that list. It goes on and on. We are grateful for so many things. And Jesus has reminded us today that gratitude is a Christian virtue, that his followers should spread the aroma of gratitude in this thankless world for our own good, but also for the good of those around us. So today, when we come forward to receive Christ in communion, we thank him for that gift. But we also need to promise him that this week we will follow his directions, that we will be grateful, we will show that gratitude. God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. <clears throat> for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he was gone to a death and was buried. And on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us present to our loving Father our prayers of petition. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he will continue to lead the church in proclaiming the good news of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work in public services, that they will understand the value of what they do and find satisfaction in working with integrity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all caught up in the distress of war or natural disasters, that they will find relief through the generosity of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and those who suffer in any way, that they may be comforted by the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we may have the courage to recognize and leave behind all that keeps us from Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more young people to hear and respond to God's, God's call to serve the church as priests, deacons, and consecrated religious, especially in our diocese and for our seminarians, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parishes, Ernie and Ann Saffel and Tammy Pinterich, for whom this weekend's masses are offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold in the quiet of our hearts and minds, and for those who have no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we present you these petitions. We ask you to hear them and to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the gifts are brought forward and the altar is prepared, we will sing number 653, Give Me Ears to Listen. Yeah. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Geoffrey, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we come to the table of the Lord, we will sing number 579, Worthy is the Lamb. Stop and stretch. 
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I have several announcements for you today. A reminder that uh, to confirmation age parishioners who are eligible for the sacrament, the initial confirmation class will be held Sunday, this tomorrow, at 11, uh, following the 11.30 Mass. The class will be meeting in Marion Hall. So if there are some here who might uh, apply that message to them, let them know. If somebody you might know needs to be confirmed, invite them to come to that class. On Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, we'll hold a session for our ushers and hospitality ministry volunteers. If you can't make Sunday's session, it will be repeated this coming Thursday at 6.30. Both sessions will be held here in the church. Again, for ushers and hospitality ministry volunteers, 6 o'clock Sunday or Thursday at 6.30. Please notice that next Saturday is our Rosary Rally at the Courthouse Plaza. That will be at noon. We encourage you to participate and pray for our nation through the rosary. What a powerful prayer form that is. So if you're able, please join the rally. Next Sunday, our parish youth group will hold its initial gathering at St. Francis Cabrini Church Hall, the gathering center. And that will be grades five through eight will meet from two o'clock until four o'clock in the afternoon. Grades nine through 12 will meet from six until eight in the evening. We encourage our youth to become involved with this newly reformed youth group. So please spread that good news to your youth so that they will be involved with the parish youth group. If you have information or questions you need, contact Tommy Geis, the DRE. He'll give you more answers to that. 
Next Sunday, the fall sessions of the parish bereavement ministry will begin. There's an announcement in today's bulletin, so please, if you are so inclined, please join the bereavement ministry sessions during this coming fall. The bulletin has an error in it. There will not be Spanish Max next weekend. I am not going to be here. I'm going to be away. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so I will not be here, so there will be no Spanish Mass. So if you planned on sleeping in next Sunday, you've got to come earlier. Our St. Mary's School Central students are selling basket raffle and 50-50 chances there for their raffle coming up this coming Saturday. So take a look at the beautiful baskets they have there and buy some tickets. If you don't have your money with you, they have flyers, and there's a flyer in today's bulletin. You can order your tickets as well. And welcome to all who are here visiting tonight. We're glad you're with us. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a great week. Thank you. We go forth from our celebration singing number 379, sent forth by God's blessing. Sent forth by God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from His dwelling take leave. God sacrifice and it all now be extended, the fruits of His mass in all hearts who believe. The seed of teaching are in her soul's reaching shall blossom in action for God and for all. His grace shall incite us, his love shall unite us to further God's kingdom and answer his call. With praise and thanksgiving to God who the task of our everyday life we embrace. Our faith ever sharing in love ever caring. We claim as our neighbor all those of each race. One bread that has fed us, one life that has led us, as night has life that we share, then may all the living with grace and thanksgiving give honor to Christ and His.